the sanity of this is just um Cheap. I don't know. Not important yeah, I, was just, and I was just in Grenada, so it was a little bit of a story yeah. that apparently she's on a boat off the coast of Grenada to this day, <laughs> trying to get her and the baby home. But it's Cheap. like oh. why you know, if you don't want a birth in the hospital, fine. Have a yeah. home birth. But to Cheap. go halfway it, across the world. Yeah. You know, if you go back more than uh, to earlier than maybe about 1960, 70, probably a lot of people got mm -hmm. born on boats. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and in some cases, you know, fleeing refugees or whatever, this happens. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, but then. Yeah. Oh. Rooms. Okay, I guess I'll do. Hmm. Are you here, Kyle? I am, yes. You know, but I'm not room. invited to a room. Yes, because you joined after I created the rooms. Let me see. Where should I put you? Mm, how are you doing? Pretty good. What are you on the seventh day? You created all the rooms. Now you're resting? Uh, I'm not resting still. Apparently, no rest for me yet. All right. All right. Let me see. Let me put you in room two how do i do that where are you there you are two should pop up right here we go thank you okay ron i seem to have kicked myself out of team or out of uh, zoom oh no i'm not sure how he did it but why anyway. the, why are the two of you here um do you have a second device on? Not that I know of. No. I thought I kicked myself out because the Zoom thing just disappeared. I'm I'm gonna kick the other person out then. Um, yeah, kick kick the original. Like, I guess I can quit there. Or can I? Okay, good. All right, and then okay. throw me wherever I was supposed to go. Actually, I don't know because as soon as you disappeared, it took you out. Um, That's true. About where that would have been let's see to make the teams balanced i think you're going to be on team five yeah that makes sense okay team five okay sounds good i'll try and why is look. karen karen why are you still here karen uh, what's going with karen you're muted if you're trying to talk mm -hmm. karen jamie jane kevin Peggy, Vincent, Kyle, and Bill. What? Three is Adrian. Alan, Carolyn, and Jim. Yale, me, Leonard, and Saunders. Carl, Celia, Kelly, and Ron. You fuck.
Yeah. Karen's gone. I think she's here and she's not. I don't know what that means. What's going on, Karen? You're on mute if you're trying to talk. Can you hear me? Oh, uh, Karen, can you hear me? Well, I'm... Says Karen refusing to leave the main room. 
she was gone then she's back but she's not in any room um i don't know what's going on on she might have got disconnected because i had to oh read. she just texted me she's on the phone with an attorney ah okay she but it says she's not phone. connected i don't really understand i'm looking at the breakout rooms and uh Hers is not like everyone else's, so I don't know what's going on. Well, she's in this room, isn't she? Well, she is, but when I when I she was oh, on signed? she was listed as a breakout room, but yet it was grayed out. Oh, because she's not there. It shows it grayed out when the person's not in the room, but there's right. something to it. She hadn't joined the room. She she was she was a member of that group, but she hadn't actually gone to the breakout room. Well, maybe that's what it is. Okay. So, Adrian. Yes. Apparently, we're being recorded. Just oh. thought I'd know. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Rob, by the way, I sent you a link. If it might help. Yes. With, with what? <laughs> um, Facebook Messenger. No, no. Would it help with what? The Wikipedia page. Oh, okay. Thank you. Have a look at it later. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, so uh, Karen's supposed to be up first, but we can just switch the order of how we go uh, if she can't come back. If her, I don't know what her call's about, but it's obviously important. So, but we'll take the team names now. Let's do that. So whoever mm, was in team one and knows what the name is, not Karen, what is the name for team one? Trump will finally become... A famous celebrity. <laughs> oh, Hell, Eberty. Uh, hey, team, we did the right thing. <laughs> All right. That was good. Team number two. What's your name? Sec. Tiny, uh, tiny fingerprints. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, that's good. Oh, like the babies. Yes. Uh, yes. I sense a theme happening. Was yes. that a... Oh, wait, 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 wait. I only <laughs> sent to Adrian. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. you did? Yes. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> That's why she was the only one laughing. <laughs> there we go. That may not be why, Vincent. <laughs> <laughs> I just let him feel good. So team two, tiny, tiny oh. fingerprints. Well, this is okay. not at all related to the story about the the, no, no, this baby. is related to the, <laughs> you know, the other the, tiny the thing. Bigger baby. The, other tiny the, the bigger baby. Yeah. The bigger okay. baby. Uh, related to the Manchurian cantaloupe. Yes. <laughs> That's really funny. So team three, led by Adrian, what is your team name? We are the orange crybaby cry creatures, our quote, Australian curses, end quote. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Orange cryberry creature Australian curses? What yeah, Austra it's a curse that is in Australia and England, but doesn't is it's kind of forbidden in North America. You can't say it. Ooh, are we gonna hear about that on the skeptic though in the future? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> what is an orange crybaby? I think we need oh, to. I that's think to that's the second. the man that's, that's that cantaloupe dude with the small oh, oh okay. I'm it's a you. cryptid and his fans. Yes. Orange Cheeto. Okay. Team number four, led by Gail. What is your team name? Barbie and the Pink Kangaroos. Uh, another one I don't get, but okay. <laughs> well, Richard, explain it. Have okay. Have oh. you heard of Barbie? Yeah, I don't get the Pink Kangaroos <laughs> nor the connection to Barbie. So maybe it's in the movie. I haven't it's seen because it. Because I made lots of kangaroos lately and one of them's pink and someone said are there pink kangaroos in the barbie movie? okay right. ah. we have a connection and finally team number five we have enough people for five teams this week and coral <laughs> oh, that's it's, a rainy, it's a rainy day, day in georgia, georgia. Um, <laughs> so we ah. do have a yeah so we do have a bunch of pundits that's the quote i uh i was talking about too rainy day in georgia i saw that one earlier uh -huh. thought i didn't pick it for our team name <laughs> all right i do sense a pattern mostly here okay so uh this is game number 174 season four 
First team is Trump will finally become a famous cell ebrity versus tiny, tiny fingerprints versus orange crybaby creatures are Australian curses uh, versus Barbie and the pink kangaroos, apparently origami kangaroos. And it's a rainy day in Georgia. Very good. Okay, so first it's up with Karen. Karen's back from her phone call. Let me give you your powers. Here we go. Thank you, Rob. I apologize for not calling you as you asked. No, I, I understand. No problem. No. Was They're it waiting what, what, for was all it week for the... this call? And they call like right at 6 30. And nine. it was with an attorney. So just because Trump has had so many, odds are it was somebody who actually has been a Trump attorney. Is that true? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, regarding Team Two, shouldn't uh, shouldn't Trump have been a radio announcer? We pause for station identification. Uh, uh, that's, chunk, that's good. I, <laughs> a good chunk of those Trump attorneys aren't attorneys anymore, or yeah. they won't be in a while. Yeah. yeah. I, I like okay. the I, I like the other the other saying that uh, MAGA actually means make attorneys get attorneys. So that. <laughs> Oh, I that's, like that's, that's good. good. That's good. I haven't heard that one. Oh man. I okay. like I so, like the Karen. preform. To explain the Australian I like, I like the uh freeform of not uh, muting people. So uh, we'll try that. Uh, okay. And the, the category is Karen, but not that kind of Karen. The name Karen was one of the top 10 names for girls born in the US during the 50s and 60s, peaking as the third most popular girl's name in 60. Five. I was born in 63. Due to its increasingly common derogatory use since 2017, the name has become significantly less popular in the U.S. in recent years. And so. apparently, uh, Burke is a. Uh, were you were you here when we were talking about Burke? Uh, yeah. Kelly, okay. Kelly's last name is a derogatory term in some parts of the world. Wow. Okay. I did not know that. Another uh, category. Okay. So. Um, I'm going to why am I having problems with the cut and paste? Yes. Okay, I guess I'm gonna walk. Okay. Wow. So number one is <sighs> okay. Number one is Karen Starr, a character created by DC Comics, is the civilian identity of what superhero? She's also the cousin of Superman. She made her first appearance in All-Star Comics number 58, January, February of 76. That is number one. Okay, number two. Whoopsie. Uh, cut. Number two, Karen Plankton is one of two main character, uh, two main antagonists in this television and film series. She and Sheldon J. Plankton are the married owners of the unsuccessful Chum Bucket restaurant. <laughs> Sheldon is an intellectual uh, planktonic uh, copepod and Karen is a waterproof supercomputer. <laughs> Who comes up with this stuff? Oh, I'm glad Robin's here because oh. Robin, Robin uses the term Karen all the time. Uh, which, which you know, and I, uh, they're really neat. I'm glad there is an, a word, a single word in the U.S. vernacular that now means what it means. I'm sorry that it's my name, but I think it's really important that we have given voice to this uh, injustice. Robin, the category is Karen, but not that kind of Karen. Oh, are you doing this category? I am. Okay. All right. Okay. So uh, somebody Robin's kindly post on our team, right, Rob? Uh, kindly post one and two, uh, somebody for Robin. Okay, number three. A number, uh, uh, Amanda Seafried in her film acting debut played the sweet but dim-witted Karen Smith in this 2004 U.S. American teen comedy film. It was written by Tina Fey and based in part on Rosalind Weisman's 20, 2002 book, Queen Bees and Wannabes. Okay, All right, uh, cut. So the question is the name of the film? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Celia. Please name the film. Uh, okay, number four, there may be a typo in this. 
You may know that Karen is not an uncommon name in East Asia, notably Japan, Hong Kong, and Taiwan. But can you name the West Asian nation where Karen is a fairly common first name for males. It borders two Middle Eastern countries, is considered European by some, and transcontinental by others. The nation, not the name. Fascinating. Okay, I know. Can you believe it? Okay, number six. But is it spelled? Uh, Does that matter? Um, that was four, we need five. Four. Oh gosh, did I oh my gosh, do I not have enough? Oh, five. Thank you. I do have a five. Thank you, Gail. Good <laughs> gravy. <laughs> yes, we have a five. Okay, let's let's erase. Thank you. You see, I need you. I need you to not be muted. Here's number five. Karen entered into the English language from Danish, where it has been a short, where it has been a short form for what name? since medieval times it became popular in the english-speaking world in the 40s so it's kind of modern really <laughs> okay here we go Doo -doo. uh number number six six karen shanaz blank born uh april 15th of 1979 is a canadian actress you can see inclusive here, not just US centric, US American centric, is a Canadian actress, singer, and songwriter best known for portraying Princess Isabella Maria Lucia Elisabetta of Valencia in ABC's fairy tale themed musical comedy television series Galavant. Her last name is a common first name for males. Okay, number seven. Category is Karen, but not that kind of Karen. Okay. Karen Jane Blank, born October 5th, 1951, is an American film and stage actress. She made her film debut in the comedy Animal House in 1978. Her critical and commercial breakthrough came when she portrayed Marion Ravenwood in a 1981 action movie. Her last name is a common first name for males. Okay. Number eight. Number eight, though it is sometimes publicly denied, there are those who claim this Karen is called mother in private. What is her current last name? What? <laughs> if you know the answer, it'll make sense. Oh. Okay, so number nine, this drummer and contralto, contralto with a three octave range weighed just 108 pounds on her five foot four frame when she passed yeah. away at age 32. Robin, we can hear you. Robin, we hear you. This drummer and contralto with a three octave range weighed just 108 pounds on her five foot four frame when she passed away at age 32. Name this Karen, but not that kind of Karen. All right, this one is kind of fun. This one is longer. I hope it all fits. Uh, it does. Okay. <laughs> Do lo, 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 lo. Okay. This is a silly one. Okay. Before there were sci fi coups on the internet, there was a science fiction haiku. Not on. Oh, there we go. There was a science fiction haiku. Probably the earliest publication of a science fiction haiku was by Karen Anderson in 1962. Anderson, who passed away in 08, was a U.S. American fantasy writer. Which of these, if any, is not one of her six haiku? The white vapor trail scrawls slowly on the sky without any squeak. Or B, gilt and painted clouds float back through the shining air. What are these stars too? C, in the heavy world's shadow, I watch the Sputnik coasting in sunlight. D, those crisp cucumbers not yet planted on Sirtis, how I desire one. E, in the fantastic seas of Venus, who would dare to imagine gulls? Or F, when Proxima sets, 
What constellations do they dream around our sun? Ignore the uh, closed parentheses at the end of that. That's a mistake on my part. There's no you, significance to you mean the... You mean quotation, I think. Thank you. So ignore my verbal mistake about the written mistake. <laughs> <laughs> and, okay. and, if, and Karen, but punctuation if, counts. Yes, Ron. If, if one of these is not hers, did you write it? I will not answer that question because <laughs> that that would be a clue for yes. anyone that knows me. Mm, this is this uh, sounds like something ChatGPT could do if you said it could be. Write, write me one like. Fortunately, this. none of us have ever met you. Yes. <laughs> if one of these is not, shouldn't one of the choices be none of the above? Um, okay, if you uh, someone will help uh, Kevin read the uh, question and answer that question later. Okay, okay. everybody. Okay. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> okay go to your rooms bye bye um, have fun see you later okay i gotta figure where to put you robin uh let's see these teams are very equal right now it's exactly the same number of people on every one Maybe one where someone's going to be leaving early. Carolyn usually leaves early, Rob. That's a good point. Okay. That's a good point. Um, wait, That's before you send Robin, do you know why I like to go first or second, Rob? No. Because I enjoy a beer or a glass of wine. And when I'm doing a category, I wait till I do my category. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. It doesn't stop me, Karen. <laughs> okay. So Robin is going to room three then. There we go. Thank Have you. Fun. All right. So I guess I got to get to room one to try to help them. Uh, I'm not going to be of any help at all, but I'll go there. All right. There we go.
Hey, hello. Hello. Howdy, howdy. This is the team we will not be on. <laughs> Never know. So my team, I, 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 there's Faith and Romero, and I actually did meet them live. Mm. Wow. Hello, they... everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back. Are, are, Welcome. Uh, Vincent, are Faith and Romero three-dimensional people and not just inhabitants of little rectangles and welcome to folks ah, who arrived, yes. Yes, arrived during are. the break faith and ramiro and deborah so stand by to see what teams you'll go on and how rob will decide <laughs> i want to tell you that i worded number 10 with intention it was poetry with intention and it was made to be a conundrum for people that are super literal about the way they interpret <laughs> things. So a lot of you fell right into that trap. And I encourage you to think, what might we not be thinking about? Thinking outside the box. So I expect you to argue with me on number 10. And I think I might be a hard ass on it. Okay. <laughs> uh, real, she a real Karen. <laughs> you put, uh, you put number 10 back on oh. the chat. Oh. Wait, put, put the whole thing number 10 back on the chat. It's there. No, I'm I going back. No, I'm going back. It. Someone it's else do that. Someone else do that for Bill. I'm going to go to the answers now. Okay, I'll take it. Oh. Okay. Bill, number we're one. going with your answer. Okay, okay thank you. The... Oh, okay. oh, 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 oh. Okay. okay, so we're going where whatever answers you have are your answers. Okay, so for number one, uh, uh, so the thing is, how do we go? How do we go here? Uh, how was it worded? What her name was, right? Karen <laughs> Starr, the cousin of Superman. Her name is Power Girl, not Supergirl. Power yeah, Girl. I knew it wasn't Supergirl. I never heard Power of Power Girl. Girl. Oh, okay. Girl. Okay, and I was happy, and uh, that a lot of you knew this. It's a very ridiculous and kind of hilarious uh, cartoon and film series, SpongeBob SquarePants. He lives in a pineapple under the sea. SpongeBob SquarePants. Under the sea. <laughs> under okay. the sea. And, the and Plankton is the villain. The category, the category, um, <laughs> Deborah, Faith, and Romero is Karen, but not that kind of Karen. Okay. And then what was this, what was this? Uh, oh, wait, I'm sending this to Rob and not everyone. My apology. I will change that to sweet. Okay. So, uh, so there, the answer is mean girls, queen bees and wannabes, uh, talking about the hierarchy of cliques in high school, queen bees and wannabes. And uh, Tina Fey was part of that, uh, making that a film. And it was called Mean Girls. Okay. Uh, oh, there are some people that are not going to be happy about this. But this is the answer. What nation is that? And uh, as far as answering, is it spelled the same way? Well, I didn't answer that question oh. because it depends on what letters, what characters are used, right? Wow. In different country so that kind of would have been a, a clue celia when you ask is it spelled the same way and the nation is armenia uh -huh. yeah. oh. i tried oh, yeah. to give you lots of help because of where armenia is placed some people say it's west asian some say uh transcontinental <laughs> so forth that that actually confused us yeah that's yeah okay yeah, I Okay, so okay. the I mean, so, so the transcontinental right? what I could think of was Turkey, of course, but Turkey. Yeah. Okay, oh, of course. So the answer to uh, now this is according all of these answers are according to the Wikipedia page on Karen, or links, going out. You know. Uh, Wait a minute, Karen has a Wikipedia page. <laughs> yes. Fake Karen being a bad person, but Karen. Richard Saunders, origami champion of the world, doesn't have one. Karen has a yeah. So okay. the answer <laughs> is. Now, there you are going he, to. Have he variations. still has one. Don't be premature there. Oh, okay. You are, you are going to have variations in your answers. I will accept different spellings of the name I'm about to click. 
but it has to be this name. You could spell it many different ways, but it has to be this name. Can you spell it George? Catherine. It can be spelled with a C, with a Y. Ah, yes. Okay. Catherine, yes. Catherine, oh. Y-N. Uh, but it well, must you be spell Catherine. it with a Y because of Yatherine. Doctor says out of it. He had it. <laughs> Yatherine. But... Yes, we'll accept Yatherine. <laughs> Robin had it. We were, yeah. but we're Danish very people, close. Danish Ka <laughs> Katrinas and all that that I know are Katharina. Okay, a... we're going to go to the next answer. Number six is David. David. Yes. Yes. Okay. Adrian knew that. She's a, a and probably Vincent. <laughs> She's a lovely I'm actress. Very talented actress. Actually, okay. that's a bit too old for me. But no, okay. I didn't know that. All right. <sighs> and so then the other, of course, is Karen Allen, who performed with Harrison Ford in Raiders <gasps> of the Lost Ark. Well done. Should, should have known that one. Allen, I, I, did you get that? I tried to give different clues by offering, you know, the year it was, the nature of the film, that it was a man's name, trying to make these fun and figure outable if you don't know them, for the most part. Okay, now someone groaned about this and said, what, what you talking about, Karen, about someone who is sometimes called, <sighs> it's alleged that she's called mother behind closed doors, but that's debatable. What is her current last name? It is Pence. So it is out there that former Vice President Pence calls his wife mother. He has denied that, but people that work for him swear he does it. So they have kids, uh, right? So they have yeah, kids. Ronald, Re Ronald Reagan called Nancy mommy. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. They have kids. Yeah, it's weird. Kids, I guess it's a weird republic. Kids call their mom. It's That's a very not. old fashioned thing. Mm -hmm. I used yeah. to very old. It's also a kink. Okay, so number number nine, who is that person that was 108 pounds on her five foot four frame when she passed away at age 32? Fabulous voice, uh, three octave range, a fabulous contralto, and that was Karen Carpenter. Karen Carpenter. It's her voice. Okay. Okay. And the answer, here we go. Huh. Uh, which 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 of these if any which of any which of these if any is uh is not one that she did right if any none the answer is none they are in fact the entirety mm. of her work called six ha haiku published in the magazine of fantasy and science fiction okay which option is none in july there is no option <laughs> then there is then, no, option. Then there is is no is answer the it's, answer it's yes the answer is None. There, they, which of these, if any, is the answer? Is none of them? None of them. That's the answer. Hey, they're very please, outside the box. Karen. Please don't do that, anyone. Anyone? They anyone are in fact. Do. Well, that's fine. Did anyone get that right? Yeah. Yes. We, we okay. said yeah. none. We, we said it's again. probably okay. none, but we got to pick a letter because none yeah. isn't yeah. an option. So I would. I would encourage, any. I would encourage okay. you, I, those of you for whom this doesn't make sense. Rather than say, do it my way in the future, I would encourage you to look at it and say, why did this make sense to some people and not others? How might I grow <laughs> intelligent as I am? Except, by, except. By this, this doesn't follow Robert's order. By this, order. Use, by this keep, use Keep of it up the, and we're going to call you a Karen. By and this also, use yeah. of the uh, English language. So would you ever want like you to argue with me? I encourage you to say, Karen, the manager. Isn't Karen, that tell them it's Karen, Karen, to quote, to, it's what you said. Karen, to <laughs> it, it quote someone we all if any. To quote someone we all know and respect. It's a lovely question and a marvelous answer. <laughs> it's a perfect <laughs> question. But I was yeah. about to say the same, you, Leonard. <laughs> but I did it on purpose. I set a trap that some of you walked right into, um, oh. and and. And some of us that walked right into it still recognize the cleverness of it. And I encourage you to add a tool to your toolbox now that mm -hmm. you've had this experience. <laughs> and the answers link, there you go, is the Wikipedia page. Um, if you hate me, please only hate me for a short while and like <laughs> or love me very soon. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, thank you, Karen. What a Karen. Karen. Well done.
Thank All you. right. It was a great, it was a great category. And I would like to invite everyone to Google and watch an excellent movie that was about Karen Carpenter and it was filmed entirely with Barbies. And <laughs> <laughs> started watching it because it was you know going to be funny but it was actually really really good and it was made it was a student film by someone who is now like a big time movie director and I don't know his name but he's made some big big movies and um so google it and watch it you won't be able to stop watching it uh, the thing about uh Karen Carpenter she had uh, anorexia nervosa, and that's what killed her. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yes, yep. and you will learn all about that when yes. you watch this movie made entirely with Barbies. Yes, that that, that was superstar? known, and that that was what I was referring to without stating it, Bill, in by stating stating what I did. Yes. Uh, by the way, Karen, does Katharina work for with Katharina? I'm going to ask you to let my words stand, Bill, and we're going to move to we're going to move to scores. Thank you very much. I think the answer to that was yes, then, Bill, because she said any formation of that. Catherine, Catherine, any version of Catherine, not Katharina. It has to be Catherine. It could be C A R T H. It could be Catherine. Ah, see, I would have thought that was a variation of Catherine. Nope, Catherine. Catherine. The word Catherine. However, that's why it has quotation marks. Okay. It has to Thanks sound like Catherine. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's go down the, the um in order here, since we don't have any scores yet. All right. Please, Trump will finally become a famous celebrity. What did you guys? Uh, think? Six. Uh, six. Whoa. Tiny, tiny fingerprints. Got eight. <laughs> I love that team name. <laughs> Orange crybaby creatures are Australian curses. I still don't get it. What's what'd you get? Six. <laughs> Barbie and the pink kangaroos. Four. And lastly, it's a rainy day in Georgia. Nine. Oh, very Nine. good. Nine. Wow. Nine. Nine. Oh my God. Look, we got second wow. place. That's pretty good. Well done. Oh. Okie dokie. <laughs> did, any, did anybody get number 10 correct? We yes. Did. yes. We did. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, we did too, but except we said there's no one. Thank you very there. much. I encourage <laughs> you the rest of you to be curious about that. Yeah. Yes. Um, it's very just tricky. wrong. You won't change my mind. Yeah. So like, she's just the reader. I, uh, I knew that Karen Anderson was Paul Anderson's wife. <laughs> the mother of Astrid. <laughs> what? Next? Okay, so Peggy is up. I'm looking for Peggy on my screen and I can't find Peggy. I'm here. There, thank you. There you are. I'm there. right here. Why can't you see me? There's yeah. your, you're on my second screen. There you go. <laughs> There's your capabilities. Okay. Um. So tonight's category is a theme. So it's a mystery category. Yay. Ooh. Is it Ben? Is it Ben? Is it rats? It's not Ben. <laughs> it's Karen's. It's all the answers are Karen's. <laughs> are you ready to have that people be muted? Cool. Yes, mute people, please. All right. Here we go. We are muting. And now Peggy can Peggy, you have to unmute. Okay. I kind of like muting, but but I appreciate Karen's perspective on it. Oops. Sorry. Where are you? The chat. When you go to half screen, the chat goes away. So number one is actor who wrote and performed in the film Sling Blade. And number two is Pastor Rooney, the primary male protagonist in the game and TV series, The Last of Us. Number three, Lady Day. Copy. 
And what's yeah. the question? <laughs> Lady Day. Number four. It. He was the host of The Soup, starred in Community, and had a recent cameo on The Bear. <laughs> All right, and number five, Southern Baptist evangelist, Mitch McConnell and Paul Ryan called him America's pastor. Jim Baker said he was the greatest preacher since Jesus. Be... Film director, director for decades. He recently directed The Tragedy of Macbeth with Denzel Washington. Emmy, okay, seven. Emmy, Tony, Grammy, and Golden Globe winning actor, comedian, who won the Mark Twain Prize for American Humor in 2007. He won the Tony and an Oscar for playing the same part, also the father of the most infamous nose job in Hollywood. Scottish actor, comedian, musician, and writer appeared in Mrs. Brown and Muppet Treasure Island. And finally, don't copy the answers at the same time. We have number 10 is American film star from the late 20s to 1976. He appeared in many film genres, was best known for classic comedies like Sullivan's Travels and Palm Beach Story, and Westerns like The Virginian and Ride the High Country. All righty then. Questions? Are there answers? I have a question. Um, on the The Last of Us, Question, are you talking about the name of the character or the name of the actor? Primary protagonist in both the game and the TV show. So it has so to it be, must be the character. Got it. Okay, I'm open in all rooms. I have power. You putting us in a room, Susan Gerby? Thank you.
Can you hear me? Can you see me? I can do both. It's great. Right. Very good. I'm afraid to go anywhere now. So I think everybody's done. Uh, but I have power, so you have to call it back. All right. Close all rooms. There we go. Thank you. Hmm. It also did this funny thing earlier because Vincent was sharing the screen with the questions and everybody saw it except me. It didn't share to me. Yeah, I've never heard of the app updating while you're in Zoom. Uh, I've had it happen when I say join and then it says, if there's a new version, do you want to update? But never while I was here. That's really odd. And I didn't say yes to it or anything. It was just, it just was this mm. taking over my machine in some robot-like way. Computers, can't live with them past the day. I know. All we can do is complain about them and they're great. So anyway, let's see. So Peggy, did you work with Kevin on this one? I did not. <laughs> um, I just uh, thought it would be fun to do something different. Yeah. And, it, and because Susan's not here, it's good because it's uh it's too easy for her recent uh recent rule so did you uh get it all sorted peggy i think well i'm in now let's just hope so um is everybody back yeah what's susan's recent rule whoever she wants them harder huh. we didn't really have enough time yeah that's not yeah, a rule we didn't have enough time either so that's a that's okay. guideline you didn't have enough time? No, we don't have oh. answers to all. We have, we've been discussing them, but we haven't settled on answers. I am uh, okay with uh, sending you back out. I just can't do it. So Rob, yeah. if you wouldn't mind. Yeah. Giving I'm going to I'm gonna stay here and visit with folks. That's what our I'm going to do. I'm afraid <laughs> does, to our team need, does our team need to go back? I don't no, think we're, so. We're good. Okay, yeah, hey, I think our team said that they were good. They love the answers, so mm -hmm. whether they're right or not is another. I thought this one was really fun, Peggy. Yes, oh, I agree. Yeah, it was fun. It was, yeah. It welcome was welcome back, Celia. Thank you. Is yeah. screen sharing yeah. sharing? Could be. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. Not right now. My screen sharing is all fucked up. No. Oh. Screen sharing has failed to start. Please try again later. Error code zero. Wow. <laughs> Zoom doesn't oh. like you today. I know I'm all Zoomerated. <laughs> well, I know there are at least two teams who know all the answers. So even if I couldn't access them in another way, y'all know them. That's an interesting riddle. You're telling us two teams know all the right answers. We have to figure out who it is. Yeah, that's the last. <laughs> that, that's the mystery. Yeah. That well, would have been a good one. You know. Well, it wasn't me who knew. Okay, all in that case, I'm going to declare that we know all the answers. Therefore, yeah. You get a bonus it? point if you figure out which team knows all the answers. <laughs> I'm going to I, I, I knew the theme, five. but not the answers. I got. I would have got about six or seven on my own. I would have been very well, my surprised, team Kevin, if you didn't nine. get this one. And my team brought us up to a nine, I think. The the answers I knew only let me figure out half of the theme, and the same thing happened to another one of my team members with the other half of the theme. Yes. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Oh, Ron and Kelly, good team. Yep. Well, but, but Carl, knew, Carl knew it anyway, so yeah. it would have been fine. So I think we can bring them back, don't you think, Rob, if they get an extra two minutes? Up to you. They'll scream yeah, at you. You can always go in the room and check. I think we're on the I one can't. minute. I can't. I don't have power. Oh, oh. Wait, I'll give you power. Here you go. I'm no. afraid to take the power. I don't Here think they'll, they'll have, have a warning, the Peggy. They you will have, have a warning. You got the power. So they'll figure they, it out. They have two minutes. So, yeah. No, it's, it's one. It's, well, the, the time is right one out. minute. I don't seem to have the power at this point. I made you co host. Says you're a co host. Where oh, is Susan here we go. Tonight? What, Celia? Where is Susan tonight? She is traveling in the Pacific Northwest. 
Oh, nice. Last I saw, she was in Seattle. Oh, okay. Oh, I guess I saw that too. So I was expecting her to be here tonight. So I was starting up on my Seattle trivia and Washington <laughs> State and and the uh, the needle and all that stuff. I'm like, what year was the needle built and stuff? You know, I still. <laughs> you gotta get that ready for next. It was built for the uh, World's Fair. World's World Fair, yeah. So we have Susan Rob Gerbic. Uh, like 62 or something, 1962 or so? Well, uh, yeah, it was finished in 62. Oh. Well, there goes. Now everybody knows for next week's trivia when Susan comes back. Gonna We're going to remember this in a week. I have an answer all by myself. <laughs> That's rare. Oh, there they are. Yeah, they're coming back. Can we go back again? <laughs> Man, that really didn't help all that much. We think we've <laughs> solved it. We think we've figured out the theme now. Well, that was quick. Okay, so you oh. get all 10 answers because they're short. Number one, and there was a PowerPoint, but I can't use it because of whatever's going on with my zoom thing number oh, one damn it. billy bob thornton number two is joel miller number three is billy holiday mm. oh. number four is joel McHale. oh no number you five didn't. is billy graham <laughs> somebody just got the got the theme huh <laughs> number six is joel cohen to say if kevin didn't get it he's you know, he's fired <laughs> <laughs> Number seven is Billy Crystal. Number eight is Joel Gray. Number nine oh, is Billy oh, Connolly. Oh. And number 10, Joel McRae. <laughs> and so I thought it was Elton John, Elton John, all the way down the line. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Joel. very proud that the, I remember Gray's dad's name. The theme I'm is... Um, <laughs> um uh, I'm still not getting it. Thank you, Leonard. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, let's get the scores then. Uh let's see. Starting with Barbie and the, the theme is Kevin. Cruise. <laughs> Kevin ish. What? I didn't hear that. Eight. Eight. Mm -hmm. Hold on, oh. we got nine. We got well, every. We only one. had Joel for number two. We didn't have the Miller. Did we have to have Miller to have Joel's name? Oh, you had to have both names for this. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Eat my shorts. Okay. <laughs> no, Trump will finally become a famous celebrity. We had eight. All right. I see a pattern. Let's see. Orange crybaby, et cetera. We got three, and team, I wrote down Joel Gray when we were talking about it, and I left it there. Ha! Aha! Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> that point might help. And I, I had Billy Connolly on the tip of my tongue, and I was just going, Bill, it's <laughs> Billy, <laughs> Billy, the Scott, it's got a Scottish accent, Billy! We got, we got nine, Rob. Really? So tiny, tiny, tiny fingerprints, that's you, right? Nine. We got nine, yeah. We got nine. Wow. Oof. <sighs> Oh, wow. And it's a rainy day in Georgia. We had a binary two. And <laughs> yeah. taking the lead by two points. And by question two, we knew the theme with Thornton Miller. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so break time. Who's set up to take the photo first? Who can do the whole screen at once? Uh, I can do that. Thank you, Carl. Yeah. Okay. Got that? Dog seven. Yes. All right. And before people leave, we need people for next week. We have nobody. I'll take one of the spots. I'll, I'll take, take a regular I'll take, round. I'll take a category. Yeah, I could I could take a category also. Okay. Let's see who's talking. That was Jamie. Ron and Jamie. I heard and Ron. Carl. Hey. hey, hey. Jamie, let me type these in here. Yep. Jamie and Ron. 
and there are no Ben's or Rats in this and one. And Carl, and who wants <laughs> the no. bonus? Anybody with a bonus? Top 10 something? Worst 10 something? I'll do it if nobody else wants it. Nobody going for it? So Robin, Robin, Robin's into it. Thank you. Robin's got it. Okay. Thank you, Robin. Right. I, I sent the picture to Susan. Great. All right. All right. Great. All right. Five minutes, people. Thank you. Well, it's um, a little left a little early there. <laughs> anyway, I guess I'll I guess I'll uh, head off. Uh, uh, Bye. It's a it's a lovely background. You can uh, go for a okay, nice. Okay. See hike. you next time, Jim. Yes. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I. Um, yeah. The. Uh, heck. I'm gonna show. Uh, choose virtual background. That is looking the other direction towards the base of the cliff. I'm at the top of in the other one. <laughs> Anyway, that's less picturesque. Yeah. Right. But uh, and where is this, Jim? This is a Mount Yamnuska, which is <laughs> is is you're heading west from Calgary on the Trans Canada. It's sort of the first actual mountain you see to your north. <laughs> yeah. It looks so um dry, is it? Um, well, it's just that it's rock, so that uh, it rain that falls on it drains away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I mean, more than that, it just seems like a dry terrain. Well, in this okay, direction, well, it doesn't. Oh, oh, okay, so you're so we do. It is somewhat the rain shadow of the Rockies, so that it's uh so that uh, go east, and you're getting yeah. Um, hmm. Anyway. It, it's it's sort of semi arid. It's uh, yeah, it's that's wet, kind it, of what I meant. Yeah, it's it, it's wet enough to have trees yeah. to some extent, mm -hmm. but uh, but it sort of goes trees and sort of grassy and. <laughs> is, is that near Bam? Yeah, so it's between yeah, so it's yeah, so uh, between, it's between Calgary and Banff. Oh, yeah. So you're getting into almost like subalpine climate ish. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. So this yeah. So this yeah. So this is as I say, it's right at the east end of the Rockies. Is uh, or as you're heading west from Calgary, this is the first mountain you actually see to 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 your north uh, um, from the Trans Canada, and uh, and then you're going another few tens of kilometers uh to get to uh, Banff uh but go uh, past that to Icefields Parkway it's much prettier and better we were there yeah over a month ago <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah so, so since, since it's just east of the Rockies that it, it is a uh, fairly dry not not desert but uh uh sort of it gets to grasslands uh, a little, just a little farther east. <laughs> it's cold. I'll put it that way. Well, it's uh, it's thirty four at uh, C at the moment, but tomorrow it's supposed to be uh, high. It's supposed to be about seventeen C. <laughs> so, so we 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 just had a bit of a heat wave with a hot with hot with highs in the uh, high twenties and low thirties. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Sounds nice, actually. Yeah. 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 Bear in mind that this is Canada. We're talking to centigrade <laughs> Celsius. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's like roughly in the seventies Fahrenheit, more or less. No, let's see. No, uh, it's about uh, it's about eighty six. Yeah, so, that's hot. Wow. Well, it also depends. Like a hundred degrees Fahrenheit is thirty seven degrees Celsius. Right, right. No, I know it doesn't. It doesn't oh, translate like perfectly, but the, the thing I always remember is is twenty eight degrees Celsius is eighty two Fahrenheit. Yeah. Okay. So just just reverse so those numbers, and it kind of gives you an idea of what temperatures people are it talking is, about. But like when you if you just thinking like ten degrees difference in Celsius compared to what ten degrees in Fahrenheit is here. That's right. 
you know, that's 18. It's, it's, yeah. It's an entirely yeah. different. Yeah. Like here, like, here you're tins- approaching 38 degrees Celsius, your temperature, but think of the humidity and humidity here has been about 50, 60 plus yeah. percent. Yeah. So yeah. Now the, you walk outside you're sweating balls. Yeah. Now the, now the humidity isn't terribly, it seldom gets very high in Calgary. Um, so, so even when we're, even when we've got a bit of a heat wave with temperatures in the thirties, it's not all that hard to take. <laughs> it's still quite warm though. Yeah. Well, when we were there, I have a question and we started, Leonard was helping me answer it and then we ran out of time. So maybe you can answer it for me, Leonard, or maybe somebody else can. Um, I wanted, I need, I have to make a video that's going to be emailed to people. Videos cannot be emailed. No, you have to send a link. You have to, so so what what we said was put it in your Dropbox. Yeah, that's the part I don't know how to do. How do I get it from from a Zoom that I'm making myself, of just myself? Do you, if you have the video into Dropbox, can you get it onto your computer? Yes. Well, I can get it. Copy. I can Good make night. a video in Zoom and record it. And, right. and you save it onto your on your computer somewhere. How? That's the question. I don't know how to do that. Just copy it. No, she doesn't know how to save the video. Ooh. What? The... I've if never re- made a video in record, Zoom. I have no idea. If you record a Zoom, you make a meeting with just you in it. You hit record. When you've finished your meeting, you hit stop. The video will process and save it to your computer. Okay. I think it saves it online, actually, Richard. I, With- whenever I've done it, it saves it locally. Okay, so you've got it set up that way because a lot of times it will go straight to your account online. I don't. Uh, I, d- I don't have a paid account. Yeah. So it always just saves it locally, and then I've got to, you know, then I go ahead and just use it however, however I want. In fact, what I've done in the past is I've been going to give talks at, at conferences online, and I always do an, a um, a safety. So I'll give the whole talk with presentations as a Zoom video and have it as a backup in case the line drops out or you know something happens. But Gail, the, my best advice to you is to go to YouTube and type in your question. Mm, that's a good, a good idea. And there's oh. bound to be someone who's saying, this is what you do. That's a good idea. Yep. That's and what there's I a do. non-zero chance they'd be right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Found this oh, cool picture goodness. on the internet. Jesus is a superhero. He's slamming his fist into the ground and bottles of wine shooting up in the air. Into the Love it. <laughs> I thought it was hysterical. Go, Jesus. Um, Carl, I wanted to say something to you that, about my category. Uh-huh. Um, you were pondering, uh, you know, perhaps I wrote one of those haiku. And I want to tell you when I read them and I thought, if someone knows me or gets my sense of humor, which of these will they think I've written? And <laughs> I chose the cucumber one that you mentioned. Which <laughs> we said the same thing. If she did it, it's the cucumber one. <laughs> so silly. <laughs> hey, hey, Karen, do you know when Susan's back in Salinas? I, I do not. I think she said she was going for two weeks. I could go back and look and see when she left. Yeah, I, I was hoping oh, yeah. to come down and visit for at least a day, but I don't know if that's going to be possible this trip. Because I want to go back to that restaurant. Yeah. Which restaurant? Well, I'll go I'll take you to the restaurant if you come down, but um <laughs> Which tight, one? It's Which tight restaurant? quarters. Richard? It's tight quarters here. I wish I could offer you a place to stay. That's all right. Well, which but, which restaurant? Seriously. Ooh, Michael's tight. I can restaurant. offer you a place to stay. Well, so can Susan. But I can certainly if you need anyone who needs a place to stay in Salinas is welcome to stay at my house. Richard, did oh. you hear that? She has a love she's on the right uh on the edge of town near the river. It's a very Michael's, nice house. Very yeah. Michael's Taqueria in Old Town Salinas. It's That's so it. yummy. That's it. Oh, okay. I'll have to check it's, it out. It's, it's Kyle just has stayed here the, before. 
and the servings are and they're like holy mackerel. I, Which I restaurant they, is this? Michael's Taqueria. Oh, yeah. Michael's Taqueria. I've eaten there three times, and every time when the food comes out, I think I'll never get through that. And somehow, <laughs> it's good enough that you just keep going. We we keep, I love this, Kevin. I've there long enough. I want that poster in my living room. <laughs> Richard, make sure you and Robin have a way of connecting. I um, I also had uh, you bought me a beer when we were there, Karen. That was very nice. You got it. You got another one. Anytime on me when you come to town. Uh, look, I'll be in Salinas. You've traveled a bit, Richard. Yeah, I've traveled a bit. I'll be in Salinas this year for another time this year for sure. It's just a matter of lining things up, but that's all right. Okay, all you West Coast folks are making me jealous. Um, <laughs> all right. It is, so it is pretty nice right here. All right. Time we for... have had a very cool summer today. It's about sixty five. It's about sixty five yeah. right now, and it's basically been sixty five all summer. Yeah. Who's Sorry, got anyone else. Anything to say during the announcement segment? <laughs> All right, I got one for you. Yes, Colin. I, I hear you I have yeah. a podcast. I do. Yeah, this week on Data Skeptic, it's a pretty good one. I talked to a researcher who's starting to look into the question of whether or not AI is taking away jobs or what jobs might be a threat. And rather than just kind of like sharing his thoughts and brainstorming on the matter, what they did was. They got a catalog of common occupations, broke them down into tasks, and tried to come up with some empirical answers. So that's this week on Data Skeptic. Ooh, interesting. Are, are they um, taking away jobs they... from writers for skeptical magazines? Not just yet. <laughs> that, that was not listed um, in the database he had. Okay. Is there Kyle, anything... have you looked at the most recent Skeptic's Guide to the Universe? They I have. They did a segment on AI and 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 um, robocalls that was very interesting. Yep, I'm very eager for them to fix that problem with AI. I think it's pr prime for that. What? What? So, what's the problem? Robocalls. What summary? What? Uh, how to stop them when you get annoying phone calls that are like a voice? It's, it's not really how to stop them. It's how to flag them so that um they can be tracked down oh it doesn't see, yeah, no. it doesn't it doesn't stop them uh from coming in oh see in thailand what they do is any robocall the government uh, modifies the phone number they put like a plus nine seven eight in front of the number so if you ever get a phone call and the a phone call is from a nine seven eight number you know that it's a scam or uh, a robocall, so you avoid it. Wow. So the here, it takes yeah, the very little place. technical effort to completely spoof a fake incoming <clears throat> number. Yeah, the way I, caller ID works here, that can't be done. My yeah, landlord here, uh, gets those calls um, almost daily, and I try and tell him, Steve, this is not even a real yeah. person online. And, and so I demonstrate it to him sometimes. I'll put on <laughs> speakerphone, and I'll say things like, um, my belief is the sky is made of pudding uh, <laughs> kindly, kindly express your opinion i mean just say something in an odd formation like that and there'll be a pause and say ha 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 that's <laughs> that's amusing and, so anyway would you like to sign up for this i have only two toes hmm i see would you like to sign up for this <laughs> <laughs> do you have special shoes <laughs> <laughs> All right. I hear there is a podcast from Down Under that comes out every uh, week. Is there a new episode coming up? Yes. You're very lucky. Only for you. <laughs> <laughs> this week on the Skeptic Zone podcast, you can count on Adrian with Adrian Hill, chats to Janice Boynton and Susan Gopik about the similarities between facilitated communication and psychic reading. Ooh. That's Ooh. Interesting one. Ooh. We also look at Yuri Geller's latest foray into <laughs> stupidity with his um, <laughs> with his alien dead body alien references. So funny. Oh, I haven't heard Trove of this Mark week. Looks at the history that photographic of evidence, Rob. Yeah. Trove this week looks at some of the uh, historical references to chiropractic in Australia, and also we mention the Centre for Inquiry's latest legal avenue against homeopathy. 
all that and more on the Skeptic Zone podcast at skepticzone.tv. Very cool. That's so a good I, one. I, I've been on the uh, the emails back and forth. Uh, you're arranging with Barry Carr to come on at some point? Yes. Yes, I've got to get, yes, Th that will happen. Yep. Very cool. Okay, anyone else? So Susan's not here. She usually has a lot to announce. I'm sure she'll have a lot to announce when she gets back. Um, my thing was exactly a week ago, my interview with Richard Dawkins was published, and that's the link to it. We talk about a little bit about just general stuff, but mostly about uh, PsyCon. It's, that's the point of the article, to interest people who like Richard to come to PsyCon. So there you go. The next one out is going to be with somebody right on the screen here. Although he's not a speaker at PsyCon, I'm just doing an interview because we're going to talk about one of my favorite subjects that should be out next week. That was with Richard Saunders. Let's talk about UFOs. Let's talk about UFOs. Very cool. Kelly's way ahead of us. Look, she's already in the star. Yeah. <laughs> we, had yeah. Our, we had our own spacey backgrounds on appropriately. And okay. You so, UFO if you're bad enough at identifying stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm. So if we're ready to go, uh, I believe you have your powers, Adrian. Oh, cool. I'm magic now, how am I? And just Kelly's got a UFO with her. It's an unidentified <laughs> object. <laughs> well, and I am... Uh, I worked with Faith last weekend, and I'm working with Kelly and Faith this weekend. We did the Hawthorne Effect last weekend, and we're doing the, the Stanford Marshmallow Test this weekend. We're going to talk about that. So that will come nice. up in the future. future Stanford future. Marshmallows? Yes. The Stanford Marshmallow Test. Really, you'll really to, smart you'll have marshmallows. To give yourself some delay gratification. Wait for it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Good oh, one. Good one. Good one. <laughs> nice. Well done. O only for smart marshmallows. Yeah. <laughs> so, in homage to how I got into this whole skeptical thing, which was through this Skeptic's Guide to the Universe, and particularly, <laughs> uh, did I say that right? Yeah. Uh, for some reason, I just had a brain. Um, I don't know what you're going to call it. Uh, so anyway, particularly science or fiction, that was the thing that really grabbed me when I first started listening to the podcast. So today we are going to do science or fiction, a Ooh. version of it. Now, I'm not going to say <laughs> that I'm going to be as good as Stephen Novella at doing this. There's no way. I just started yesterday. And there, <laughs> for each category, you will have three Oh, I, I don't know what happened. I should say three or four statements. So there, it's going to be ABC or ABCD, just like they do sometimes with science or fiction on the SGU. And two or three are science, true, and one is fiction. State the fiction for each. In other words, find the one that's false or the fiction. Two that's truths it. and a lie. Yes. yes. You or what people muted? Yes, please do. Okay, here it comes. All right. So question number one is clothing trends. So A, in 1918, a trade publication called Earnshaw's Infants Department stated that the generally accepted rule for a baby's clothing is blue for boys and pink for girls. B, colored clothes were not used for babies until the 20th century. Before then, male and female babies were dressed the same in white, since it was easier to launder and bleach. C, before the 20th century, it was common for young girls and boys to wear short dresses. We get a clarification. Yeah. Which country? For, not, for C. Oh. Um. Yeah, I was gonna ask the same thing. Same question. Uh, Are you talking about North America? Keep in mind, my father was born in Romania. Yeah, so for A, that's a good question. A, because it was a department store, it was in the US. For B and C, I believe it's Europe and North America. 
Western countries, more or less. And, and how, far, yes. how far back before the 20th century are we going? Because Neanderthals were pretty much nothing. Uh, Carrying on. Fun <laughs> acronyms. <laughs> before the 20th century for several hundreds years, as far as I remember. But anyhow, didn't want to make it too long. Fun acronyms. A. Adidas, Adidas is the acronym for All Day I Dream About Sports. B. CAPTCHA stands for Completely Automated Public Turing Test to Tell Computers and Humans Apart. The two acronyms for the word CARE in CARE Package, so taking that word CARE, are Cooperative for Assistance and Relief Everywhere and Cooperative for American Remittances to Europe. And D, POG, the 1990s game, stands for passion fruit, orange, and guava. You said each category will have four, three statements. I said three or four. Oh. So it one of them is always going to be false. Okay. Just yeah. picking out one. Okay. Yeah. If you look up at the top, it says two or three science are true and one is fiction. And I did do a typo where it says each category will have three statements, but I verbally said it will also have four. Okay. So three or four. Okay. But thank you. Next is big business. A, Chevrolet did not rename the Nova for Latin American markets, despite Nova, meaning it go, doesn't go in Spanish. It proved a popular vehicle. B, Netflix was founded after its co-founder, Reed Hastings, was charged a $40 late fee by Blockbuster. And C, in 1989, Pe PepsiCo bartered with the Soviet Union to exchange millions of dollars worth of Pepsi for 20 decommissioned warships and vodka. Question four, is food? A, fortune cookies, whose origin has been highly contested, were likely invented in Japan in the mid-19th century. B, potato chip, or crisps for Australians and Brits, recipes have existed in cookbooks dating back to 1817. C, steak tartare was invented by Mongol warriors who tenderized the meat under their saddles. And D, Peanut butter was used by the Aztecs and the Incans as early as the 15th century. Oh, I didn't realize I was on mute when I made my comment about C. I'm going to say it again. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> Number five, English sayings. A, butter someone up comes from an ancient custom in India where the devout would throw balls of ghee, or ghee, however you say that, butter at statues of their gods to ask for favors and forgiveness. B, rule of thumb originates from an English law allowing a man to beat his wife with a stick no thicker than his thumb. C, mad as a hatter originates from the 17th and 18th century France where hat makers used mercur mercury for making felt hats. D, barking up the wrong tree, refers to hunting dogs that bark at a tree where their prey once was, but is no longer there. And by the way, there's some of these, like the sayings and stuff, there are variations. And I went with the sort of most common ones I could find, find from the most reliable sources. So they still may be I just want to wrong. clarify the butter. You're talking about ghee, right? Yeah, ghee butter. Yeah. Like it's a clarified I want to butter. clarify the butter. Yeah, yeah clarified butter. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh god. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's a punny night. All right. Number six is vertebrates. A piranhas only eat meat. In other words, they're kind of carnivorous. B all bat species have eyes and are capable of sight, and almost all megabats have excellent night vision. And I'm not referring to echolocation when I'm talking about night vision. C the memory span of a goldfish is a few months. And D, the only frog that makes a an actual ribbit sound is the Pacific tree frog. Now my favorite one. 
just because. Math. <laughs> A, the repeating decimal 0 0.999999 goes on forever, represents exactly the same quantity as the number one. B, Lewis Carroll, whose real name was Charles Ludwig, what, Ludwig Dodgson, God. I'm not going to try again, wrote several books under the name Dodgson on geometry, linear and matrix algebra, mathematical logic, and recreational mathematics. C, the ancient Greeks deliberately designed the Parthenon to match the golden ratio. According to Wikipedia, in case you don't know the golden ratio, in mathematics, two quantities are in the golden ratio if the ratio is the same as the ratio of their sum uh, uh, to the larger of the two quantities. Most people have heard of it. I know it kind of doesn't make sense, probably doesn't help a lot, but uh, it's in nature a lot. And you've probably seen examples of it, if you think about it. Next, a fun one, well, sort of. Unusual deaths. A, Jean-Baptiste Lully, the French composer, fell on hard times and suffered from poverty in his later years and was driven uh, by starvation to beg for food. In 1687, a gentleman who recognized him gave him a guinea with which he hastened to a baker's shop, purchased a roll and choked to death on the first mouthful. B, in July 19, 1518, several people died from heart attacks, strokes, or exhaustion during a dancing mania that occurred in Strasbourg in what is commonly called the 1518 dancing plague. C, in 1567, Hans Steininger, the burgomaster of what is now Austria, died when he broke his neck by tripping over his beard, which was 1.4 meters or 4.5 feet for Rob, long at the time, and was usually kept rolling, rolled up in a leather pouch. Now this will be some of your favorites, the law. A, in Victoria, Australia, until 1998, it was illegal to change a light bulb unless you were a licensed electrician. The fine for disobeying was 10 Australian dollars. B, in Canada, it is against the law to play less than 35% of Canadian artist content on the radio. And C, in Singapore, chewing gum related offenses are subject to caning. And the last one, quotes. A, Marilyn Monroe said, well-behaved women seldom make history. B, Leonardo da Vinci wrote, though I may not like, let's put it down, thanks. Uh, B, Leonardo da Vinci wrote, though I may not, like them, be able to quote other authors, I shall rely on that which is much greater and more worthy on experience, the mistress of their masters. They go about puffed up and pompous, dressed and decorated with the fruits, not of their own labors, but of those of others, and they will not allow me my own. They will scorn me as an inventor, but now but how much more might they, who are not inventors, but vaunters and declaimers of the works of others, be blamed? A lot of words. And C, Voltaire wrote a nice short one, a witty saying proves nothing. So hopefully that helps for those of you who can't remember names like I can't. <laughs> you have a, choice, a chance to get, uh, to get some of these. Any questions? So did you get these from the Skeptic's Guide or did you no. make these online? No, no, that's why they're not as good as the Skeptic's Guide. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> these are the inspiration for them. But I found a wonderful Wikipedia page which has all kinds of myths on it. And I mm -hmm. just went through there and then found real right. ones. Fascinating. So Very, good. Of, Very good. Very good. All of these um, have one correct, actually factual. Week. No, all of them have one fake. One fake and the rest are factually correct. correct. Yes. No matter, you know, whether we, what we believe or whatever. 
Yes, um, and there's a lot of common myths that are in here too, like you know yeah. some things that are, yeah, um, you know that have been around a while, and uh, sometimes and, I think and it's the things. actual thing. I mean, the point of the statement, you're not making nitpicky about no. So I'm not going to. It's not going to be like a date that's wrong. It's exactly. going to be yeah, yeah. The, the, the fact, the fact is not a fact. Is, is yeah, wrong. it has to be not, not because the there's a or misspelling or, or some kind of trick wording or okay. Yeah. It's, it's gonna be likely awesome. to be something that Trump would say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you no, know, I mean, there's a lot of myths that are widely believed by a lot of intelligent people too. And yes. Too. Yes. Okay. So have fun. I'm looking forward to the discussions. Well, I'm glad I stayed on for a little longer for you, Adrian. Oh, I'm glad you did too, Vincent. Thank you. All right. <laughs>actually listening to this book that would be right up your alley that Susan wouldn't like. <laughs> it's called Different Gender Through the Eyes of a Primatologist. And and he it's really interesting. And he's looking at primates, right? And studying them. And there was some some of this stuff in here I got from his Oh I his actually haven't I, I was thinking of doing a category like this. I got a book a long time ago, which is says it's I don't remember the title, but it is something like that. And it's like like you know, like Napoleon was not short, you know, that like right. those kinds yeah, yeah. of things. Yeah, yeah. Kind of things. All right, yeah. let me go see if I can help my Yeah, go go help my team. Out, Make sure you do well. <laughs> which is what we're in three. You're in three, right? Yes, three. Yes, we're in three. Have fun.
Okay, well, that was interesting. <laughs> I, and now for something good. completely different. Oh. That was a fun category. I enjoyed it. Oh, good. Thank you. I like it. I like it was fun doing, I'll tell you that much, because I wouldn't have done well on this, but it was fun to, fun to bash the, <laughs> those urban myths. Yeah, yeah. very well constructed fun. myths. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we had a good time overthinking all of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I am going to, I've got a PowerPoint because it'll speed things up a little bit, I think, for the answers. For some reason, I kept thinking also, maybe I'm not thinking outside the box properly and they're all false. <laughs> <laughs> the, the way it's con the way it was constructed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, everyone see that okay? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. That's well, trivial. I can't because my Zoom is all screwed up, but. Oh, no. Okay, well, I'll, I'll read them out. I will put all the answers in at the end um, as in A, B, C, D, et cetera. So for question number one, it was very interesting to see lots of the discussions for this. And don't forget 1918, the first question is actually A. And A. It, that's when the change of colored clothing started and it really became popular in the 1940s, but this is when it started. And it was actually the opposite. And from the publication, it said the generally accepted oh. rules, pink for the boys and blue for the girls. The reason uh, is pink being a more decided and stronger color is more suitable for the boy, while blue, which is more delicate and dainty, is prettier for the girl. I thought that was a oh. I think Ron DeSantis would try to push a law against that. I think <laughs> I <know. laughs> oh, no doubt. <laughs> I just loved that when I found we that out. We did it right for the wrong reason. <laughs> I, 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 I've heard that doesn't before. matter. And the fun acronyms is A. I think most people did get this because the company was actually named after its founder, Adolf Addy, it was his nickname, Dassler. And so it was Addy, sort of a combination of the two. You can see it in black there. And we used to his say brothers, all day, I dream about sex. His brother started Puma. Ah. And we used to say all day, I dream about sex, not sports. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so this one for number three is B. Actually, he made Hastings made the story up for a value oh. summarization to try and oh. sell the company, and it was inspired by Amazon, not Blockbuster. Oh. Next one is food. Number is C, the steak tartare. Uh, this dish actually oh, no. in the 20th century as a variation on the German American Hamburg steak. <sighs> So it's a very, fairly recent thing. It doesn't go way back to the Mongol warriors. Apparently that's a myth out there. <laughs> and this one was fun. English saying, there's actually no evidence that B is true, the rule of thumb. The ah. it, false etymology has been broadly reported in media, including the Time Magazine, Washington Post, CNN. And the expression originates from the 17th century from various trades mm. where quantities were measured by comparison to the width or length of a thumb. Oh. And this one is piranhas. Surprisingly, yeah. they are omnivorous. And they only swim in schools to defend themselves. And what I thought was really interesting is they hardly ever attack humans and only will bite your hands and feet. Not like in the horror movies, you know, that <laughs> devour you. Surprise. Um, Adrian, that's yeah. that's not a piranha. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh, did I got the wrong thing? A picture is not <laughs> a piranha. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's the closest I could get. I thought it was cuter anyway. Really? <laughs> oh, I, I think I thought you were showing the food of a piranha. Is, he doesn't have the memory. He doesn't remember that he's he has no memory, remember? <laughs> and it's so that's, funny because I forgot I put that there as a funny joke. But wouldn't be know, in with piranhas carrying in on. <laughs> uh anyway, he's scared of the piranha. And for math, this one here I wanted to do a little bit more because I thought there might be some people that thought. A, I didn't see anybody talking about this, so I have no idea if everyone got this right or not. The answer is C. There's actually no evidence of the fact that the Parthenon was uh, was made according to the golden ratio because it was completed in 438 BCE, more than a century before the first recorded mm -hmm. mention of the ratio by Euclid. Oh, so so your, okay. your team, Adrian, needs to apologize to me. <laughs> what <did> you, <laughs> I told them. I told them the repeating equaled one. No one believed me. 
I, yes. and I'm going to show you why. Because this sorry. Is <laughs> so here it is. Uh, this is not a proof for those of you who are pedantic about mathematics, but this is something that I would show, say, to a grade eight or nine student when you're doing repeating decimals, because 0 0.1 repeating is one over nine. 0 0.2 repeating is two over nine, 0 0.3 is one or three over nine, which reduces to one third and so on. So there you can see it, 0 0.9 repeating is nine over nine. And there's your math lesson for the night. And if you really want to get into the actual proofs of this, there's several, they get into the infinite geometric series proofs, they get into limit proofs, et cetera. It's on Wikipedia, that has a whole page about it equaling one. <laughs> yeah, so but you can't point. trust anything on Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> it, was a good job, but it didn't have mine it had some proofs that aren't proofs but it never had the one that i just used how many references are there is this notable maybe we should put a, a, a suggestion to delete this page it is a really long page just saying that's uh, very notable <laughs> very notable oh my gosh and the unusual deaths i was kind of hoping that you would catch a little hmm. thing i put in here which was the there's a guinea which is not french currency but you know maybe you thought he was in england uh, His actual death was he died of a gangrenous abscess after accidentally piercing his foot with a staff while vigorously conducting a to diem and it was customary then to conduct by banging his staff on the floor alan got that yep. Did he? Did he yeah alan? <laughs> alan, alan knew that one that's awesome I didn't know what it was, but I knew it wasn't the one we picked. <laughs> the bad guy. For the law, most of you actually got this wrong, I think. It's actually the Singapore one because the punishment is a fine or jail time, but never mm -hmm. flogging. You can be flogged for other things, not for, for the government. Or caning. I'm sorry, caning. Jamie. That was caning. me misinterpreting right. that the entirety of the statement had to be false. I'm sorry. Yeah, that, yeah. I, I agree with you there, Cameron, because the way you said it, it sounded like it wasn't going to be a trick question. And it's actually, mm -hmm. most people just get a fine, and it's a small fine, though it can be a really large really fine big. for repeated offenses. So it Wait, can, was a, so now I need to kind of ask if there were if you could talk about that. Bit picky. I guess that one was a bit picky, huh? That was a bit picky. Right, I, really I, I have to I'm ask back. Richard about this uh, light bulb. Thing. Does he <laughs> re does he remember this? Of course that's not. Well, I, I'm. It, it's now. It's if that's true, it sounds to me like one of those crazy laws you hear from time to time. Yeah, yeah. Oh, guess what? Still on the books. This blah yeah. blah blah blah. And I'm, that's I'm exactly surprised. what it was. The yeah. law was passed when electricity was first happening, when it was actually dangerous to change a light bulb. And it just stayed on the books until then. Mm. Okay. You know, okay. sometimes these laws, there's some crazy reasons why they're really hard to that's get fine. off the book. Good. So like yeah. Pacific Grove, where I live in California, besides being the last dry town in California, it was it was originally a a, a, a religious retreat, a Methodist retreat. And they've got... For the longest time, they still had all kinds of crazy laws. There's still some that are in the books just because there was some reason they were hard to remove. And unfortunately, there was a, a, a like a covenant <clears throat> about not being able to sell your house to uh, Blacks, Asians, or Jews. And there was some reason that that was so hard to get out of the off hmm. the books that it only like came off like 10 years ago. Yeah. Adrian, that was yeah. a wonderful effect. That Did was you like that? Should we do it again? That's very <laughs> cool. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so uh, this is my fine, the grand finale, right? You know, so here we go. Mm. Uh, this is nice. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of people did remember this. I was very impressed. Marilyn Monroe, Monroe has been quoted as having said this many times, but it was not her that said it. It was actually written by batteries. Monroe. Thatcher Ulrich, uh, historian and professor at Harvard University. And I think, Karen, you got that one got right, it, right We got it right. It's the, the title reason. of a book, right? Jane knew it, too. It could be. And, and actually, what's interesting, too, is, is it often says at this seldom, the word seldom is replaced with other words that mean the same thing, like rarely. So it's often right. misattributed to Marilyn, Marilyn Monroe. Miscredited and misattributed. I wonder how you did that this curtain is, effect. Is, is this PowerPoint? yeah this that was very cool so it's so leonardo da vinci really did say that big long 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 one he did and it was all about people you know we being, guess that they could copy him in english 
Yeah. <laughs> I think that's where that's that little brackety thing because of the translation, right? It's it's um not a hundred percent. So here's it's, all the answers in so the that's an English letter. English is the twentieth century vernacular. Yeah. So the, the, the saddest thing about oh, the like, category just... is you ruined my my strong held <laughs> belief that fortune cookies were invented in San Francisco. You're telling me they're Japanese. Yeah. Yeah, I thought yes. they were. And that is highly contentious. Uh, I heard a lot of people talking about it being invented in the U United right. States, but they actually can go back to Japan at further back. And there was a court case in the U.S. At, originally, it was one that the U.S. invented it and uh, it was overturned. And the second time around, it was decided that it was Japan, if I remember it correctly. And they did have it was a larger version of what you see today. But it was folded over. There was a fortune inside, and yeah, it was a slight. It was a different, like I think, a different texture. But they were very much similar to what is today. So that it was cool. exactly the same, except for the ways in which it's different. There's some lineage of it coming to the U.S. Yeah, we could we can popular probably still say that. San Francisco's Chinatown popularized it. I think that would be totally fair to say. That's where they became really popular. Yeah. Okay, yeah. let's get the what score. What was the answer Thank to the vertebrate? Can I ask a question? The frog, the frog. Frog, okay. Thank you. No, no, what was the what was the answer to 10? Number number 10 hmm. was A, Marilyn Monroe. Oh, the then what was the frog one? The frog one was actually a the piranhas only eat meat. Yeah. Oh, right. Oh. There you go. There you go. Oh, I don't I don't think the Pacific tree frog says ribbit. I hear them all the time. <laughs> well, apparently it's the closest. They have a funny accent. Yeah. <laughs> they bud wise. There are many other frogs that sound the same. So. Uh, not according to uh, uh, the Wikipedia source that I looked up. I mean, how do you define the sound ribbit? I think, ribbit? Exactly. Scientific picture. I think that's pretty, uh, that's, a pretty uh, that's a pretty lame scientific fact. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think frogs oh can well, form you can the it sound up with the R. R. They actually had that on there at some point. <laughs> they can't go rrr, 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 rrr. No, I agree, your dog does that. <laughs> I agree just, with you. They don't just the remember to make the R sound. What, what is the depth yeah. of a frog pond? <laughs> How deep is the why we why we are needy needy the one in Delray is about wait wait maybe we're walking on Leonard's punchline how how deep is a frog pond two feet knee deep knee deep knee deep that's about right and why why are we arguing over trivia because the big money we're playing for big money because the important things are too painful to argue about. That's true too. <laughs> because the big money involved, the big prize, and then the golden belt and the trophy we all get. All right, let's get the scores. Let's see. First off, how badly Adrian sunk her team. Well, they were, we were, we were I sometimes have you, batteries in there. Deborah, yourself, no Deborah walked away. I'm going to mute her. All right. Uh, huh. Adrian's team, the Orange Crybabies, uh, who got a three last time. Did you do any better this time? I think we did better by one. I think we got a four. Oh, I didn't think we got that many. That's a 30% improvement. Would there we go. Good just saying, would have been five <laughs> if you listened to me, but anyway. All right. Uh, next. You were right. You were right. Next is uh, Barbie and the Pink Kangaroos. We had five. All right. A little better. Mm, all right. With, uh, let's see. Trump will finally become a famous cell ebrity. Well, we were going to get my estimate between five and ten, and we got five. Susan <laughs> okay. will be so pleased with these low scores. I know she's going to be so happy. Oh man! Okay. <laughs> uh, so tiny, tiny fingerprint. We got seven. Whoa! I, 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 I hope they publish no. the fingerprints when they take them. I want to see that. Uh, we and did, we did really well. Finally, it's a rainy day in Georgia. Carl predicted we'd be between a four and eight, and we got the eight. Whoa! Wow. Ah. Pretty commanding lead. Three points, though. Okay. 
Very good. So let's see who's up next. That is Gail. Let mm -hmm. me stop sharing. Well, that was a lot of fun, Adrian. Thank yes. you. Yes. Anyway, taking off, Carolyn. Yeah, before yeah. you go, before you go, Carolyn, I I wanted to tell everybody I've been messaging with Janine, and she asked me to say hello to everyone and to let you know that she um is missing tonight because she's very busy getting ready for our big Oregonians for Science and Reason weekend with um, Susan's gonna be here and Kenny Biddle and Eric Shaver. Cool. Um, and that's gonna start tomorrow night. And Janine is going to end the weekend with a big party at her house. And she's very busy tonight getting ready for the big weekend that she has planned. Um, so she wanted to say hello to everyone and tell you she's sorry she missed. Some right. people in their priorities. Say, say hi to Kenny <laughs> for me. Good night, Carolyn. Hello, goodbye. Richard, Hi, Richard. Hi, Richard, Hi, that answers Hi, your question. Adrian and no Susan everything. this weekend. Hi, Vincent. As we Hi, as we're getting started, I'm going to give you my category. But before anything else, I did not do this during the break because I was trying to help him escape. But I want everybody to know that Jamie's birthday is in three days. Oh yeah, it is. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, and I, I didn't want to have him have to get subjected to being sung to. <laughs> well, I don't know if you guys know, but we Robin's birthday now. was last Thursday, and Robin did not go to trivia, nor did I. So I think she has to be sung to today. Okay, I guess we're going to do the birthday song for it. Will least. it be Robin anybody and else? Jamie or after the fact? Anybody they else? Have we all have a birthday once a year. Well, mine's in two yeah. weeks, so I won't count. Don't count me in here. No. So is it Robin and Jamie gets it next we time? We all have one birthday once a lifetime. Okay, here we go. Coordinating. Rob, Coordinating. Rob, is it Robin and Jamie or just Jamie's next week? So Robin and Jamie. Three days. Three days. A couple days. <laughs> Depends Rob. on two days. For you, it's two days, and for me, it's three days. <laughs> I'd, say, I'd say two days. Both. Mm -hmm. Both. Rob, is it Jamie or Robin and Jamie? I'd say both. I think the okay. closest both. to the weekend. That's the way it. my family always did it. Yay! All right. <laughs> On three. One, two. Good in time. Three. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday, Robin. Happy birthday to you. Happy, happy birthday, 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 Okay. What is the category, Gail? The category is the U.S. and Canadian Constitution. Oh, okay. Doing it on the U.S. Constitution and decided that there were too many Canadians to ignore them. Ooh. So we're just we'll too many Canadians. So I didn't, I didn't realize they had a separate one. <laughs> <laughs> why? Why would a hat need a constitution? Oh. <laughs> okay. So were we ready? Ready. Uh, okay. Um, are we doing the mute? You want people muted? I don't care personally. We'll behave. <laughs> okay. Never. Here we go. All right. Question one. How many times has the U.S. Constitution been amended? Number two. Can I ask a question, Gail? Of course. So how many amendments are there? Yes. Or how many? Okay, fine. There's nothing. That's It has to be an amendment to be an amended. Right. <laughs> yes, but, but more than one more amendment. More than one happened at once. At a time. Yeah. No, it's the number of amendments. Number of amendments. Okay. okay. Number two, the 21st Amendment is the only one that was repealed. It's unique. In another way as well, what was that also unique about how it was ratified? Not how it was repealed, how it was ratified. And unique means one of a kind, so it only happened once. And so far we're talking about US 
So oh. we're talking about U.S. I'm, I'll make it clear when we're talking about the last three questions, the four questions are Canada. Okay, thanks. Of, of the four, 42 delegates <clears throat> who attended the convention, only 39 signed the Constitution. Edmund Randolph and George Mason of Virginia and Eldridge Gary of Massachusetts refused to sign it. Why? Wow. Mm. One reason for the three of them? One reason for all three of them. Okay. Number four. This is a true or false. Although the Constitution included the three-fifths compromise that counted three-fifths of the slaves in determining congressional representation, no form of the word slave was included in the document until the 13th Amendment abolished slavery. And I should include a hint there because some of you are very literal, form of the word. Number five, who was the famous founding father who was the oldest person to sign the Constitution and needed help because of his poor health? Number six is another true or false. Tom, neither Thomas Jefferson nor John Adams attended the Constitutional Convention, nor did either of them sign the document. Is that true or false? Number seven. Now we're up to the Canadian ones. The Canadian Constitution Act was enacted to finalize Canada's full legislative independence, saying that no further British Act of Parliament would apply to Canada. What year was this enacted? There are plus or minus? Nope. <laughs> I don't think we need a plus or minus. I mean, that's a significant issue. If it turns out nobody gets it right, we might add one. But I suspect oh. the Canadians are going to get it, right? Right. They're still members of the British Commonwealth, as opposed to being... I, did, I didn't like say that they weren't, because look at the next question. So I, I, would say, I would say you're, you're going to get to a big argument if you leave it that vague and ambiguous. If, like, Which? Says, if, no, if nobody gets it, then we'll see. So if you could say if nobody gets it, then we'll make it plus or minus five or something like that, but or the closest one. I would suggest doing that. Okay. I'll be around. So, so I think pick, people should know the the, the, the well, exact. Well, but, okay, so so pick so pick one of those rules then. Well, right but wait a minute. So, uh, U.S. Americans will have a problem, but people that know it will know it. Exactly. That's why I think it should be the the actual number. What American? Let's make it the well, actual number. Well, don't have Canadians on our team. But uh, that's just the luck of the luck of the, the, the assignment. Drama. Yeah, yeah. Take your care. That's the luck of backing up the wrong tree. That's the luck of the Irish. Yeah, and the Canadians have equal problems when they we're talking about Americans. Yeah. Okay, so it's well, exact number. It has to be the right number or nothing. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's just like if you're like my questions about the Caribbean. I mean, there was somebody who had lived there, and a bunch of people had never been. So that's how it goes. May yeah. each of you be one year off. <laughs> okay, number eight. The U.S. is a republic, while Canada is a constitutional monarchy. This means that while the president is the U.S. head of state. Charles is the current king of Canada. What is the title of the person who represents the monarch in Canada? Oh. Number nine. True or false? One way in which the U.S. and Canadian governments are different is that in the USA, it's the federal government that controls legislation about commerce, while in Canada, it is the federal government. Is... That doesn't make any sense. I made I wrote that wrong. Let me think. Look at that a minute. In the US, is, it, is that in the U.S. It's the federal government that no, it's the federal government. The it's in Canada, it's the federal government, and in the U.S., it's the state government. 
What? Huh? Is that a question? Can you yeah. just like I, rewrite I, that I, and put I, that I, in there? Can you write it? Thank you, Gail. I fixed the question. I miss. I miswrote it. So I read it over and over again and didn't catch that it was wrong. So I'm now going to re-put it up there. Correct. Okay. Oh. So ignore that one. Here's the correct question nine. Number nine. Number okay. Nine. True or false? One way in which the U.S. and Canadian governments are different is in the USA, it's the state government that controls legislation about commerce, while in Canada, it is the federal government that does this. That was just a typo. And finally, number 10, it's multiple choice. But isn't it actually kind of a mixture? Because I remember NAFTA was the national commerce thing. It's there's there, it's in the very clear in both governments how it's going to be done. Well, then, in both then how is NAFTA passed? I'm well, sorry? that's something you'll have to discuss uh, in your yeah team. discuss with your group. Yeah, you might be giving the answer away. Is, is it a different? The question is: Is it done differently in Canada and the United States with the federal government running it in in uh, the United in in Canada. in Canada and the state governments in the United States. Okay, number ten. I don't. I don't think that's right. I think the North American Free Trade Agreement. Stop. Is the federal Rob, government. Stop. You're giving the answer stop. away. It's a true Thank or you, false Rob. question. Have Rob. the discussion in your group. It's a true or false statement, Rob. Don't so, argue the validity. So decide if it's true or false. But that's the case. But that is what I should have written. Number ten. Which of the following is true about how the U.S. and Canadian governments are different? A, in Canada, it is a right for inmates to vote. In the U.S., the states determine this with only Maine and Vermont giving the incarcerated voting rights. B, both countries allow candidates for office to spend whatever money they can legally raise for their campaigns without spending limits. C, in both countries, the chief executive, the president, or the prime minister cannot also serve in the legislature, or D, these are all true. So okay. those are multiple true or false questions, or, or one no, of them? It's a, it's a multiple choice question. A, B, C, or Which D. Which is true. Okay, so one Which is, is true. true. If they're all true, answer D. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? No, got okay. it. Okay. Go to your rooms. Play nice. <laughs>
Hey, is there any chance? Is there any chance we could go back to that two minute warning instead of one minute that we had for a while? I don't think I, I don't think that, I can do that that's a bit of a panic when you see one minute up there. Uh, two I, I, minutes gives you a little bit more, a little bit more. Oh, well, you only got you only got the bonus left tonight. I, I don't think I can do that unless this. Has no, no, no. For a future, yeah, we'll, we'll ask the boss. Play, yeah, when, well, we well Susan's running. Minute. Susan's running it next time, and for some reason, it changes when I do it. I have no idea why. Kevin, good like, prime what minister. I did last week, what I did last week was send a group chat, a group message, one minute to the one minute warning. Yeah. Got it, uh, Kevin. But the thing is, put, yeah, put prime minister need, if it need, was a title. We I need got to it, go Kevin. back yep. because we weren't quite done. We weren't done either. Well, we... Yeah, I didn't. I didn't close it. You must have closed it, Rob. Very bad advice. How much, How much time go. do you need? How much time do you need? Uh, we, another minute will do. Well, then we can open it and then instantly close it. <laughs> Well, no, we need to discuss. Well, because we instantly close it, it'll be a minute, one minute warning. Just make a decision. Don't discuss. Just make a decision. Now, Karen, let other people run their team the way they want to. <laughs> Where am I? How do I get? Uh, why can't I get back? I'm here with. Because I don't want to talk to you guys. Along. You're don't stuck with now. us, Alan. Stay here, Alan. Help your team. <laughs> you, go, you go to breakout rooms and a dialogue box. Oh, there. Look at that. That's okay. I'll talk, to my, I'll, talk to my, I'll talk to my brother. Where was your daughter? Was that your daughter? That was your daughter that was there earlier. My daughter, yes. That was. Uh, did, oh, what happened? She got room? kicked out of Sacramento, or what? No, no. She's she's here. That she's here with a buddy of hers. They're going to a camp reunion to, uh, for the weekend. Then she's yeah. going to a conference in Iowa. Then she's coming back here for a week, and then she'll go back to Sacramento. Must be nice. You're gonna do it in her free time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, speaking of free time, so are you now retired? Or you no, don't I yet? don't. I don't find out till the beginning of September. All right. Should we issue a closed room one minute warning, Rob? I just did. Oh, okay. And we tested negative for COVID finally today. So well, Mazel Tov. Yeah. Okay. Now I can't get back. I, there was a breakout room. Well, thing once once you click close rooms, you can't get back into a room. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you're right. They didn't need me anyway. <laughs> Uh, Ronnie, did you know? Uh, I don't remember the. Did you, did you know when? Did you know the year of the uh, the Constitution thing? I, all I know is it was after I left. Well, yeah, everything was after you left. Late. Yeah, that. But that was uh, Carl. Actually, had a better answer than I could come up. I just knew it happened after I was gone. I, I was just trying to remember if it was around the time that I defected, but I can't. That's remember. That's kind of where we went. Like one year after I defected. Yeah. So actually, that can't be right because you left after me. Did Did Gail put the answers in the chat? I don't see. No. That. Hey, Gail, you didn't put the answers in the chat. Please do that. We're not done. Right. We haven't done the answers yet, Rob. People went back to give. To, I will, I will put You're the answers in the chat yeah. after I give everybody. The answer. All right, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay, we're still trying okay. to figure out NAFTA. Rob's ahead of the Rob. Group. Was, Rob was letting us know. I actually, man, sorry, um, I meant because... I meant Adrian. I don't see Adrian's answer. Adrian, did you put yours in? I did. Yes. I'm scrolling yeah. back. But they're up there. They just she just listed know. letters. Oh, there are a bunch of letters. I see them. Okay, yeah. good. Thank you. Okay. That was Is your that okay? Travel Are you ready the for these answers? Yes. Yes. Okay. How many times has the U.S. Constitution been amended? The answer is 27. Uh, okay. The, the repeal of the, 20, of the 21st Amendment, the thing that was special about it was it has to be ratified by the states. And usually it happens with the legislatures in the states, but they actually had conventions to do it. Oh, and the, and the oh that's right. So can we say hey, Carl. Pass, pass without going to the states? No, it went to the no, states. No, it went it to the states. State oh, conventions okay. as opposed to state legislatures. Okay. Yeah. So it okay. happened all at once. Number three, of the 42 <laughs> delegates, what happened to those three? They didn't agree because it didn't have the Bill of Rights and they refused to sign it without a Bill of Rights. 
And of course, later, the Bill of Rights was added as the first 10 amendments. But they refused to sign the document because they wouldn't, couldn't get them to agree to the Bill of Rights. So if you look at the Bill of Rights that's in the uh, National Archives, it has 12 amendments, not 10. Okay. Were, but they only that ratified 10 of them. Right. Well, actually, 11 have been ratified. The 27th Amendment is the second one on that list. Yeah. They were just a little slow. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> just took, took 200 years. Number four, that is a true statement. Um, it What it said was, for those bound to serve for a term of years and all other persons. That's all it said. What, what was so all, we all knew that repeat it the ended. question? Can you I put don't it know in what the chat? question was. Can someone put this in the chat? Yeah, I will put it in the chat after we've got all, I'll put oh, it in. Okay. The point, the thing was that that is true. That was a true statement. Slavery is, is not mentioned at that point. Oh, the slavery thing, right. Okay. Yeah, it was. Who was the first founding Franklin. father and the oldest person? That was, that was Benjamin Franklin. Yay. It's a pseudonym for Richard Saunders. Right? Would you yes. accept Richard yeah. Saunders? Yeah, Richard Saunders should be accepted for sure. Poor Dick. <laughs> I think we should get rid of Ben Franklin's Wikipedia page. I remember it well. <laughs> okay. Number number five. By the way, this is there. another true and false. Neither Thomas Jefferson nor John Adams attended the convention or signed it. That is also true. They were both away uh, officially. They had official positions as U.S. representatives. Um, Adams was in Britain and Jefferson was in France, so they could not attend. They were busy doing other things. Okay, uh, number seven, the Canadian Constitution Act. The year was 1982. Oh, we were uh, so close. Right. Yeah. So close. The year That's after true. I left Canada, they finally got a constitution. <laughs> 1776 was a bad guess. <laughs> <laughs> Alan said he defected. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. Spelled. Um, Charles is the current king of Canada. What's the title of the person who represents that person? The governor general. Oh. Nine. Square pants. Nine. nine <laughs> false. It is exactly backward. In the United States, commerce is controlled through the federal government. And in Canada, it's controlled through the territories. Provinces. Provinces. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Provinces. <laughs> And territories. And, and territories. Exactly. And it has Federal great implications. Right. It has huge implications what happens. It's exactly the opposite of each other. And finally, which of the following is true about how the U.S. and Canadian governments are different? And the answer is A. Oh. That is a true statement. The other two are not true. Um, Canada does have limits, we do not in the United States. And the not only can the prime minister serve in the legislature, the prime minister is part of the legislature because oh. he represents is a member of parliament. Yeah, yeah, not yeah, necessarily, yeah. because he can lose his election and still be prime minister. But he still can be allowed. in the legislature. But he can be, he yes. Is. Well, the what our he constitution answer? says that the chief executive cannot be in the Well, election, Adrian, right? what did we answer? What was our uh, answer? We changed, we went C, then we went A, then we went C because we thought Gail was being tricky with, with the, the states because we knew that the Canadians could vote. So we, we overthought it again. So yeah. inmates can vote universally in, in yeah. Canada. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's horrible in the US. It's oh, horrible. You, did did you change that while I was not there? Did you yes. change that while I was not there? Yeah, why didn't you come in into the room? Because I got stuck. You just shouldn't oh. have changed it. You shouldn't have changed it. <laughs> <laughs> that would have that would have made all the difference oh. from being last to last. Okay, the answers are now in the chat if you need to look them up. I always thought it was unfair to not let inmates vote. It's I mean, horrible. It's another so layer citizen. of our racism and yes. well, that design too. exclusion. Yeah. But they don't fail to be citizens just because they committed a crime, assuming they committed the crime. But so will Trump be able to vote? They can never vote again. 
And in some places, they can never vote again, which is really outrageous because um, they served their time. Will Trump be able to vote uh, at the next election then? <laughs> Not if he's in prison. He can write himself in all he wants. Depends on where he's convicted. <laughs> well, the federal would, would, would certainly do it. If he's, in, it if he's incarcerated, depends. if he's, if he, if he is, he, he, I don't know what the Georgia law is, but he's a resident of, of Florida and Florida has taken away the ability to vote for, for people who have been convicted. And then they put it back and then they arrested people who were told they could vote because they said it was wrong. Florida is so screwed. It's just, yes. Yeah, I think it depends on your state of residence, but he would yeah. have to serve all of his time, pay any fines and restitution, and complete probation. So I highly doubt it. Depends that. upon the state. Yeah. <laughs> all of the election laws are based on state law in the United States, not federal law. Scores. Okay, scores, please. Let's see who is currently in the basement. Ah, yeah, I don't orange know. Cry babies. <laughs> oh, there's something to cry about. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Give them a ten. Give them a ten just for the hell of it. We're we're good at counting, apparently. Three, four, five, and then six at the beginning. Five. Okay, you're not in the basement at this very moment. Ooh. Barbie and Pop the pink out. kangaroos. We have eight. Ooh. Back in the basement. Sorry, orange fry babies. <laughs> uh, um, Trump We're will finally become a famous celebrity. Five. Mm. Ooh. We have interesting scores. 24, 24, 25. All right. Uh, the tiny, tiny fingerprints. Got an eight. Ooh. Oh. Oh, okay. So this is interesting. Do we have a five or more? Four is a rangy day in Georgia. Ten. Oh! oh. oh. All right. How do they do it? Okay, I'm Good. about to torpedo my team. So. Good. Come down to the well, bonus. It wasn't me. It wasn't me, believe me. <laughs> All right, Carl, you still have the powers, right? Yes. What is our bonus going to be this week? Okay. Uh, oh, put the name in there. Make a typo, type it left handed. Subterm presidents. Ten U.S. presidents have served less than four years for whatever reason. Name them. Okay. Boom. Clear enough. Oh. Um, question. Yes. Uh, if if it's a second term president that Ten did not US serve, have served less than four years as president of the United States. <laughs> All right. Okay. Name them. <laughs> Even I'm not going to ask you a question about that. That is as clear as it can be. Thank you, Carl. <laughs> All right. So I got to go to room five. Join room five. Where is room five? Join. Yeah.
Robin, it's layers, layers and layers and layers. And unlike the thoughts. unlike the unlike the heat. That was hard. Unlike the heat where you can only take so much off and then you just have to sweat. I don't know what I just posted. <laughs> a, link, a link to this meeting, I think. <laughs> Ignore it. I meant to post something else and I had something stuck in my mouth. I would prefer extra cold to extra hot because you can always get cozier, but you can only get so cool. Yep. That's the argument I always made in the office when people kept turning the thermostat hotter. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like I can't, I can't, I could, I, you know, you, if it's so cold, your fingers are numb. Okay. That's reasonable to turn it up. But, yeah. you know, you could put on a sweater or, yep. or even wear a jacket or a coat. I can't walk around in a t shirt in the yeah. office. Well, I take your shirt off, hard. walk around in your underwear, and then they'll, then they'll put the, Oh, back then in. I'll be then I'll get fired and after then they, they fire him. Got fired him and the person would get to set the thermostat however the heck they wanted after that. <laughs> well that I was obviously their plan. I wish people at my job would listen to that logic because like I just have to dress like summer in the middle of winter because nobody will let me turn it the heat any lower. Wow. All right. So uh just a note to Kelly and my party, although the date of inauguration mm. was changed at two different times. Neither of them affected this list. Damn. But that doesn't, that doesn't mean you didn't put down a right answer anyway as a result of your thinking. Cool. Ooh. So everybody on this list is either a result of dying while in office or taking over after someone dies in office without getting uh, elected except for one person. So in order of the longest down to the shortest reigns of the subterm presidents. The 10th president, John Tyler, Yay. served three years, 334 days after the death of William Henry Harrison. Wow. Mm. Tippy Canoe Almost and Tyler the entire too. term. <laughs> Numbers, and so that's a foreshadowing of someone coming later in the list. <laughs> Andrew Johnson served three Hold years, on, Jamie. 30, yeah. 23 days after the death of Abraham Lincoln. Yay. Oh, Johnson. We Chester about A. Me. Arthur, the 21st president, served three years, 166 days after the death of J James Garfield. Oh. As a as a one cartoon said, America's least favorite assassinated president, James Garfield. Oh. <laughs> Num the 35th president of the United States, John F. Kennedy, served two years, mm. 360, 306 days, and was assassinated. Well, supposedly. Yeah. Or, or he he stopped serving because he went into hiding as part of the conspiracy. Uh, the 13th president, Millard Fillmore, two oh, years, Fillmore. 238 days after the death of Zachary Taylor. Oh, good. We'll be coming I mean, later in sorry. the round. <laughs> Stop okay. cheering for death, Karen. <laughs> and number president 38, Gerald Ford, served two years, 164 days after the death of Richard Nixon's career. <laughs> uh, as, as he committed suicide with his career until his resurrection yeah until his redemption and roger stone got a tattoo of him on the back <laughs> the 29th president warren g harding mm. died in office after two years 151 days mm. Mm. zachary taylor well, hey, one year, Taylor, 127 Taylor, days, died in office. I, mean, I don't know if he died in the actual office, but, well, you know. <laughs> While holding office. Sorry, Leonard. James Garfield, fan <laughs> of lasagna, died, uh, was assassinated after 199 days. And one, uh, one of the most common trivia-related presidents, William Henry Harrison, served 31 days mm. as president. Mm. Died of pneumonia from a oh. cold that he caught because he didn't wear a uh, jacket during jacket an inauguration. inauguration. Yeah. Ego! He also mm. spoke for three hours in yeah. the rain. This, this, mm. See, why doesn't stuff like that happen at Trump? <laughs> mm -hmm. he, he can speak like that you can see you can picture him doing something like that mm -hmm. not in the rain i mean somebody even gave him covid they... the rain would mess up his hair <laughs> he wouldn't stand it 
His Frank. wife would hold the umbrella, though. All right. And oh, no, if she wouldn't. interested, <laughs> the, the questions and answers and links to source information are in a Word document in the chat. Interesting. So when did they change the hmm. inauguration day and why? Uh, one, one of them was uh, while uh, FDR was president, and I forget uh, the other one was pretty early on. It came up in a previous trivia round. And um, why was it? They felt like it. To get the <laughs> yeah. new president in there sooner? So, they, someone they, thought they, it was a they, good idea. They, they had a conference and they decided we could create some really good trivia questions. inauguration. Okay. That was uh, harder than I thought it was going to be. All right, let's start with Adrian's team. The orange crybaby creatures are Australian curses. Six. Is that enough to do anything? Why does it keep doing that? Uh, We're nope. tied for last now. Tied for last right now. All right. Trump will finally become a famous celebrity. Did you get any? Eight. Oh. All right, so now we have a tie with 32. All right, let's go. Ah, to 25 is lower. 25, Barbie and the Pink Ruse. Nine. Ooh. Nine. All right. I thought we had 10. Who did we uh, miss? Who? We didn't get Harding. We had McKinley down. Oh, okay. Tiny, tiny fingerprints. We got a nine. A nine. Oh, and Carl's team. Did Carl's team get four to tie or five to win? Hello? Apparently they didn't get any. No, <laughs> sorry, we didn't. We only got seven. Hey, it's enough Ooh. to do it. A three-point win. Very good, people. Wow. That was close okay. between first and second, though. Well done, everyone. Rangy Look at the Daniel average Georgia. there, average score, the range. We're 20 points lower than the winner. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is a range. <laughs> and woo, um, woo, woo, woo. Rob, but more than thank, half. Rob, thank you, you so much for making sure that this continues when our glorious leader, Susan is unable to be here. You make a wonderful Susan Rob Gerbic. Oh, thank you. Susan, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm only getting worried. Like, what happens if we miss one? Like, you if know, you if listen to this, this end Susan, of the space time you are, continuum, you are always missed. Yet, it's wonderful that you're taking time off and doing the great work you're doing in the Pacific Northwest. And we're looking forward to hearing your travel tales next week. It, so that's going to be night, everybody. So we'll, be here to, so we'll be here till two o'clock next week. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. in, in answer to the other question, when was the other time they changed it? It was during uh, George Washington, which is why George Washington did not serve quite eight years. He's a little under eight years. But he was over four. So there yes. we go. George Washington served seven years, 308 days. Oh, well, that was cool. Okay. Uh, I, Good night, guys. So, Good night, Alan. Good night. Good night, Ron. Good night. And still so one why they changed. Night, John Boy. Lee. Or is to shorten uh, the lane. Last week, Richard. Saturday, Richard, stay, stay for a second, Richard, left. please. Richard. Well, March must be a much better time to be outside in Washington D.C. than January. It's so yeah. cold. So I think we gave Trump until March. Uh yeah. Richard, I took your advice and started watching uh, the UFO movie. They don't want you to see. I'm about halfway through it. Uh, you know, I had, to, I had to quit to. to how ridiculous is it? I might. I it's might, good. Yeah, yeah. How, it's, uh, how do you see it? Where Where is it? He can't, oh, I, I was a contributor, so I got a link. Okay. Yeah, but Rich, I was going to wait till Psycon because it's going to be you know streamed at, right after the conference. Oh, right. it's really good. It's and, a and Richard said, "No, nah, watch it first, yeah. and then you can watch it again." So I took his it, advice. It's got a yeah, title to trick, you trick the, the UFO believers into watching it. By so Brian yeah, Adam. no, it's it's a it's a pro skeptic, yeah, position. Yeah, so far a skeptical position. Think it's, it's it's so far, to be, uh, available to be on Amazon Prime today, but it hasn't actually shown up yet. 
So are you it's, able um, to say what you think about it without telling too much or or crossing any lines? Well, I've I've only seen I've only seen half. I mean, the production values are really great. I don't know what kind of recording equipment he's using, but it looks a lot better than the other movies. Um, and you know, I I I could possibly like um, Richard and I had sort of a debate in our interview about the very first question that they decided to talk about, like how likely is it that there are, there are extraterrestrial civilizations? And Brian came down on a side that I don't agree with, but all right, you know, there's no proof. What, what did, what, what did he say? Good night, Celia. Night. Hi to farmer. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, He's gonna go to bed. he said, that, you know, his speculation is, and that's what it is, is it's, it, is what I hear from most people which is when I started to look into it, it, and I believe that at one point too, and I've changed my mind. I don't know if I'm right, but it's like, you know, it just, it's the mathematical thing. There are so many stars and so many planets that it's- Yeah, that's 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 know. fundamentally wrong. Right, well, so so that so that so that's the part that I had a problem with, but- Yeah, I mean, right. the, 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 I don't know, which is one of the numbers you have to multiply. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any number times I don't know, is I don't know. So, but I, I I see why he did this. He said, okay, let's let's appeal to the people who believe this. I want them to keep watching this, and let's right. let's even start with the assumption that there are a lot of extraterrestrial civilizations. But then each of the things he's chipping away at makes it like extremely more and more unlikely that they've ever come here. So right. I, I, don't I know. like what oh, okay. I like what DeGrasse Tyson says very simply, you know about. Okay, everybody has this device in their hand, right? You can instantly, I mean, so I was at the grocery store the other day and someone did, hit a car and I was like on it like this. I got my phone. <laughs> oh my God. If, you know, within seconds, I took a picture of it. But if a UFO hovered over your car and beamed people next to you out, you would be flummoxed and you wouldn't take your phone Not out. Me. No, but, <laughs> but, no but the, every... the beam would disrupt the ability of oh, your phone yeah. to operate. That's Don't correct. be but everybody, silly. Everybody, like there would have been like five hundred people in that parking lot, all taking pictures, and the and but it, the phones would all we malfunction. We would get a play by play analysis on TikTok of it later. Yeah, yeah. 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 They would very this, specifically malfunction in a way that made whatever you were taking yeah, a picture. All, all these fake ion particles exactly. of the UFO would interfere with the ability. Well, to then, then 500 people in the parking lot at the mall would be all over social media afterwards saying, you wouldn't believe what we all just saw. But you know, by the way, men in black when, come up and flashy thing them. When you're in an aircraft, <laughs> you know, a commercial airliner flying at altitude, apparently... Maybe the effect of the metal around you, you know, the, the aliens disruption can't get through it because I cannot oh. believe how many videos I see on TikTok. The camera just goes out the window of the plane and it's a clear as day flying saucer next to the plane. Look at this. <laughs> Everyone is recording. It. It's all over the place. Yeah, it, 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 there may be something fake about that, Rob. <laughs> uh, I, I'm being called by a UFO. I've got to go. Bye. All right. Okay. Take care. Richard, are you not coming by this time? To Robbins? I, honestly, Karen, I don't think I can do it. Okay. But don't worry. We've got See the rest again. of the year. I'll probably be back. Bye bye. <laughs> now the aliens greetings. All right. I'm gonna cut the cut the thing because I gotta go. You all okay. take care. Bye. Thanks for playing. Okay. See you next week. All right. Bye. Good scene, everybody. <laughs>